Moving to Northern Ireland now, where yesterday another seismic announcement took place. The resignation of First Minister Paul Given over Brexit checks in the Irish Sea. But what happens now? Well, joining me to discuss this is none other than GB News presenter and former First Minister of Northern Ireland, Arlene Foster. Who better to talk us through <laughs> the situation of the resignation of a First Minister? Yes, but, I, and uh, of course, we've been here before. Uh, in 2017, we had the resignation of the then Deputy First Minister. And once either of those places resign, the other one goes automatically as well because it's a joint office. And so when Paul Given resigned yesterday, Michelle O'Neill is also out of office at the same time. It's interesting, though, because I understand there is a piece of legislation uh, going through Parliament right now, not yet receiving royal assent, potentially receiving royal assent next week that would mean that there wouldn't be a collapse in the executive uh, once this piece of legislation receives royal assent. It, it can be retrospective as well. So potentially this resignation is not going to bring down the Northern Irish government. Yes, that legislation was put in place after a new decade, new approach, which was the agreement that brought us back in 2020 to government again. Uh, it hasn't finished its uh, process uh, in the House of Commons, as you rightly say. But I think this is much wider than that, uh, to be honest, uh, Tom. What you're seeing here is the outworkings of a DUP strategy, which was announced last year, that if uh, the protocol was not dealt with by the UK government, then the DUP would have to take action in the Northern Ireland Assembly. That was laid out in September in quite a, a long speech from uh, their leader, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson. And what you're seeing now uh, is the outworkings of that, because he said to the Prime Minister in October of last year, we need to get this sorted. The PM apparently, according to Sir Geoffrey, told him that we'll have three weeks of intensive talks and then we'll move. Of course, we all know that that didn't happen. We're still in those negotiations with uh, the EU and the UK. So Sir Geoffrey decided enough was enough. And I think it's important now to talk about exactly what this protocol is doing yeah. to Northern Ireland. The, the fact that all of these lorries that are bringing in the same food that they were bringing in yes. before Brexit have to be sort of performatively checked as if it's a sort of yeah. act of theatrics because well, they're not, they're not going to find anything in these checks, are they? No, not, nothing at all because, of course, the regulations are exactly the same uh, in GB as they are in the EU uh, at this present moment in time. The protocol was put in place for two reasons. One was to protect the Belfast Agreement. Of course, it's not doing that because we've seen the institutions now in real crisis. And the second was, was to protect the single market of the European Union from any outside influence, you know, uh, lower uh, regulations that would bring some problem into the single market. Of course, the way in which they've been doing it is completely disproportionate to the risk. There is no risk uh, to, to health uh, in the single market because of food that comes into Northern Ireland and may just slip across the border into the Republic of Ireland. It's completely nonsense. Mm. Uh, but the European Union are a very legalistic organisation, as you know, mm. uh, and that protocol was agreed and they are pushing it to the nth degree, even though there is no risk. To me, it's extraordinary, given that the European Union, for the best part of three years, emphasised the fragility of the peace yeah. process in Northern Ireland, emphasised how this was a situation that needed the utmost political care. Mm. And then as soon as they got the agreement, or the agreement particularly in the case of Northern Ireland, that they wanted, suddenly there seems to be no care, suddenly there seems to be no delicacy of application. And they're going for the most legalistic, most brutal application yeah. of this agreement possible. Yeah. It's almost as if uh, the majority community don't matter from Northern Ireland. I mean, there's not one single unionist representative in favour of this protocol. Mm. And yet they've completely ignored that. They say that they're listening, but actually uh, unionists feel as if they're crying in the wind mm. and they haven't been listened to by the European Union. They had hoped that the UK government would listen to them. Uh, we've heard the Prime Minister describe the protocol just last week as insane. Mm. and that the EU were pettifogging in the way that they were implementing uh, the protocol. But of course, the PM could act. He could trigger Article 16 of the protocol and he could act unilaterally. But he's chosen not to do that. It's interesting, speaking to the Prime Minister's uh, spokesman yesterday, saying that the view of number 10 is that this is a matter for Northern Ireland. The suspension of checks is decreed um, by the Agriculture Minister mm. in Northern Ireland. Those checks are still going ahead, yeah. though, even though number 10 is trying to wash its hands of it, saying nothing to do with us, this is a matter for the Northern Ireland executive. 
How on earth does this get re resolved if Number 10 doesn't want to get involved? Well, of course, the UK government is a sovereign government of the entirety of the United Kingdom. It is they that uh, have the agreement with the European Union. So it is up to them now as to what happens in the internal market of their own country. Mm. And that's the key. I mean, this is about the union. And actually, uh, in a court in Belfast a couple of months ago, uh, the judge was saying that actually this had changed the act of union insofar as the free trade movement movement internally within the UK had been disrupted by the protocol. Mm. So therefore, we need to see action taken by our own government to deal with that. Up until now, unfortunately, they haven't taken that action. And that has forced the hand uh, of the DUP to do what they have done. And I really regret that because the institutions are now in crisis yet again. And that's not good for the people of Northern Ireland, Tom. And of course, just in the last 45 seconds of the programme, there are elections yeah. coming up in May. What's your preview? Well, there's some talk now of wanting the election sooner than May to have them in March because there's no point having what some people are calling a zombie assembly mm -hmm. taking place whilst the executive is not in place. It's not a zombie assembly, of course, because the legislation is still going through. It'll be a very tough election. It'll be a very polarised election. Uh, and I think the people of Northern Ireland will be very concerned about that. Well, Arlene Foster, thank you very much for Thanks. running us through those issues, very important issues for an important part of our country.